Okay, so unfortunately I wind up erasing the footage that was the ending of the spaghetti wire. But I'll give you a little bonus footage here uh, of some crusty copper. Ha, <laughs> look at this stuff, man. This stuff was cooked. And um, pretty much one uh, wire was like this and they wind up pulling out tons of it. And then they stripped, they had a bunch of extra good wire. So they stripped some of it themselves, sold the rest to me. They actually drove up here from Miami to sell me this stuff last night. And uh, I ran a couple pieces through the machine last night to show them uh, <laughs> how fast I could strip it to how fast they stripped all that. And uh, needless to say, they were pretty impressed. Now, I, I don't ever have customers come to my shop. So they were one of like two customers that have ever been in here. And uh, anyone that usually comes in here is pretty impressed with my setup. But I also, deleted some footage of a copper aluminum transformer video that I was doing. And pretty much it was just, um, I had head cammed me breaking this down real quick. And then I'm gonna do a percentage on this, which I'm still gonna do, uh, but I gotta kinda redo. I'm gonna have to shoot some more footage to make it interesting or something. I got some more transformers over here. You know we keep a transformer or two around here. So what I'll probably do is just run these real quick so I'm pretty sure I got enough um, transformers I can find around here to uh, just go ahead and break the same sizes down real quick uh, to get a good idea of like how fast you can break them down. And I might even have enough to do like a breaking them down by hand portion just so people, you know, you know, I know most people aren't going to have a hydraulic setup like mine or going to be able to process a transformer as fast as me. So I'll probably break a couple down by hand, you know, just to uh, just to get a good idea of like what you could actually do, um, you know, by hand. Uh, let's just say with a hammer, with a grinder. You know, I've seen some people using uh, a bandsaw, a hammer, even a hatchet. I have yet to actually try a hatchet. Matter of fact, um, now that I got a hatchet in here, I want to try it with the hatchet because. Funny thing is, the first video I've ever seen of someone breaking down a transformer with a hatchet was this guy, I don't know the name of the channel, but the title was something like, make $40 an hour scrapping copper transformers. And the guy that worked for me at the time was like, hey man, check this video out. And I remember looking at it thinking, wow, that kind of reminded me of the first time I ever broke down a transformer was by, a, by hand with a hammer. I just remember thinking at the time, wow, you know, if these guys could see how I'm doing it, they'd be blown away because uh, $40 an hour is nothing compared to what this equipment runs. Um, but at the time, I wasn't, I was still kind of strictly doing transformers. Um, and I didn't want to show anybody my, my little niche I had, you know, it's kind of like a trade secret I had. Nobody was... Nobody was paying what I was paying or being able to run them like I was running them, you know? Uh, most people were just buying them, selling them. Maybe people were breaking them down with a hammer or whatnot, but uh, that setup over there, you know, that's, that's something I kind of kept a secret for a long time. Um, and I never even intended to show what I was doing, but, you know, now I don't care. I'll show you guys everything. Because, hey, maybe uh, y'all got a suggestion, you know? I like seeing the suggestions in the comments, man. And I do uh, try to read and respond to every single comment. I don't have, sometimes, you know, I get super busy and I can't always respond to them. But, you know, eventually I'll sit down for an hour and just blow through them. And, you know, I figure if someone takes the time to make a comment, I should take the time to respond to it. So we're going to get on to this crusty copper here. Um, now, sometimes... I could throw some burnt copper or corroded copper in with the bright and shiny and they don't say nothing, but this is, this is too much. I know for a fact they would say something about this. Unfortunately, this is probably just going to have to go as like number two. So we'll get that separated out. And, um, you know, like this piece here. I would sneak that in there no problem, um, but this stuff here is just way beyond, you know. It's okay to slide a couple things in here and there, man, but you don't want to piss your guy off, you know what I'm saying? They take care of me, and um, I try to bring them 
the right shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to be sorting shit down there in Miami. They're, they're you know, that's your job. Look at this shit. That is bad, man. I haven't seen shit like that in a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a head cam on and uh, we're gonna get to it. Okay, so I was stripping some um, <clears throat> smaller wire. I do have all the spaghetti wire. I'm not gonna have time to get to this today. Um, I gotta run down south and I wanna get rid of this copper because uh, the price is up right now. I do not like sitting on copper. So uh, what I'm gonna do is strip all this stuff, get it on the table. And then I'll pull this out of this drum, throw it in this bin, and then we'll use this drum for the crusty copper. Let's see how crusty this is. I mean, we might be able to save some of it. Oh yeah. We'll get the cutters out. We'll try to clean as much of this up as possible. Oh man, see that? That's why they didn't want to strip it. Ugh. That stuff is like melted. We'll cut that right there. I mean, yeah, it's even down in there. So even if you tried to clean that up on the outside, I mean, it would probably make it look better, but it's still crusty on the inside. We'll throw that down there. It might just be the uh, end pieces. Oh yeah, see that's a good piece. This one, oh, this is cracking, look at that. That's like, wow. Real crusty stuff. Whoa! Get in the hole. Oh wow, that was flinging little pieces of plastic back at me. Now see, this one here is borderline. That's not too bad. Maybe if I took a wire wheel down that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, if it was like that, I might send it like that. But, we got some real crusty stuff. I, like I said, I don't, I don't want to piss them off. You know? <clears throat> See if we can't just send that through. Nice. Oh, all right, let's get this a little closer. Get a move on. Yeah, you see that camera mount? I did shoot some footage with the uh, with the GoPro on there, and I'll tell you what, the GoPro having a hyper smooth setting pretty much took a lot of the bounce out of it. But just even running that through the machine, I could see that thing jiggling. I had um, a bunch of good suggestions. I was gonna mount it right there, but I think what I'm gonna do is actually put a bracket on the wall or on the ceiling. That way it could just be up there on the ceiling and not have any vibration issues at all. Man, I love how to, for the most part, the machine will straighten this shit right out. Oh man, I almost knocked my iPad over. Ugh. This got some crusty sections in it. Oh man. 
Yeah, see now this stuff here, this ain't too bad. I'd probably let that slide. Now I know a lot of places would probably be like, oh, it's got one piece on it, you know. All that for that. crusty piece look at all that man dad okay what do we got some nuggets down here so stuff like this Normally I do by hand. This is borderline whether it would reach because there's a gap in between. And if it doesn't go, it kind of gets stuck in there. And we don't want to have no issues. I think that's it. A little nugget here. That's borderline, but we'll send it. Okay. All right, now, let's just throw this. Look at the two different colors. Huh. Okay, we're good. Okay, so, this is gonna be a cutter. Oh, man <clears throat> yeah this stuff was cooked <clears throat> now <clears throat> this big stuff really ain't much you can do about when the stuff is cooked on there but the smaller wire <clears throat> if you got burnt wire like that and you can't get it off if you put one end in the drill or uh the vise and put the end, other end in a drill and you wind it up like see how this is twisted you uh, twist it up and it'll shorten see this ah. see, this is a borderline man see I would send that I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that okay just slide that in there. This one here needs some work. <clears throat> okay. We'll get to that in a second. This plastic. <clears throat> nuggets. We love nuggets over here. <sighs> See, this is how stripping's supposed to be. You're just supposed to be picking up clean copper on the backside. And I will be getting like a bin or something for um, the copper. <sighs> I mean the, uh, the insulation because I do get comments about that all the time problem is even if i put it in a bin um you know i i have a dumpster that i pay for that's included in the rent you know and i can dump there but normally like when i get a ton of stuff i have my other little trailer out there man i'll fill that trailer up in a day or two no problem sometimes and that's just too much stuff. 
I don't want to overfill the dumpster because, you know, they do dump it a lot, but everybody else here has to share the same dumpster. Or there's like three or four of them over there, I think. Um, and I don't, I don't want to just load it up. I think this is a, a little too much sometimes. So I'll take it to the local dump, and it's like, I get rid of it as uh, construction debris. So it's like 60 bucks a ton. You know, and most of the time I'm bringing a bunch of other stuff there. Um, you know, pallets, debris, and um, a lot of times I'll get rid of the broken glass there, you know, from the light fixtures. And um, normally, um, it's like 25, 30 bucks maybe to get rid of the stuff. That's not really a big deal. Okay. Get all that green shit down there, man. That stuff was bad. Got me a whole bin of this stuff. That kind of needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. But I got literally buckets of all the sweepings like this stuff, especially when I'm doing spaghetti wire. Um, all the little needles, I sweep it up off the floor and it'll have insulation like this in it. Um, so what I've been doing is just saving it. Uh, so when I get that granulator up and running, I got a bunch of stuff to run through it and we're not throwing away that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm not wasting a whole bunch of time picking through it. Now this stuff isn't too bad because there's not a lot of it and it's pretty big. But now my hands are green and black. Okay. Last piece of bright and shiny. Now we need to get the cutters. Where are my cutters? And then we'll just clean some of this up. Yeah, I'm just gonna trim that there. I could cut out that middle, probably. But we'll just send it. Send it like that. Now they don't like when I coil this big heavy stuff down in the drums because it doesn't come out that easy. They gotta dump it into a big box. So I try not to do that. There's not a lot here. <clears throat> so we'll just kind of bend it and throw it in there. Oh, look at all that crust coming off of there. Now this one here, man, I bet if I took a wire wheel on that, that would clean up real nice. But we're just gonna cut it here. Okay, not bad. Okay, and then deal with this later. One last cut. Someone asked me the other day where my jaws of life was. It's right here. Sometimes I take this off because I need to use, use this uh, cherry picker for things, which I'm gonna need it here in a minute to load this in the back of my truck. Uh, but I have the original jaw I bought down here. I know I got a mess here. That's the one I need to get new blades for, okay? That's the one I put the 10 foot hoses on. I paid like $200 for that. And this is the spreader cutter, which I'll probably be breaking this out here in a minute 
to uh, bust open this big thing here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to split that stator in half um, with this blade and my 55 ton Ramco back there. Wait till you see the cylinder I got for that beast. Now obviously that's not gonna go all the way through, but what I'm gonna do is just plunge cut it and keep rotating the uh, stator and then hopefully jam that in there and pull it or I'll hook up the uh, other puller here and uh, get that going because I have a ton of electric motors and stators that have been gathering up and copper's up right now and it's probably going to keep going up hopefully but might as well get that thing working and uh, you know get my money out of all that stuff I got it for a good price okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up to pick this up I think what I'm gonna do is actually take a hole saw and bore some holes in this thing so I can actually pick it up and uh, just slide it in the back of the truck okay I bored some big old holes in here so I can put my pick straps in there um, we are way past the end but we do have 300 pounds of counterbalance back here so let's see what we got crooked I always like to kind of pick up on this uh, that's kind of sketchy I'm gonna find me some more weight oh shit <laughs> okay all right a little bit more weight back there here we'll put this on there too Probably another 50 pounds. Let's see. Oh, that's solid now. Okay. Yeah, I don't re recommend doing anything like this. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Probably high enough. Maybe it'll just stay right there. Oh, that thing went sideways on me. Let's see where we're at. Okay, we gotta come up a little bit. I think I could just drive that in now. might be hitting the actual thing. Oh no, we're good. We're good. That's gonna suck. I'm gonna have to get up in there. 
Ah, oh, perfect. And that's how you load a couple hundred pounds of copper uh, without a forklift. So I'm gonna wrap this up real quick, shut the shop down, we're gonna get on the road to Miami. Oh, I do have this. I think I'm just gonna throw this in the back of the truck. Without the drum, I don't wanna give up a drum for that little bit. Crusty copper. And that one there, that one's on the. I probably could have cleaned that up a little bit. We'll let it slide. All right. Okay, so here are the tickets from those jobs. Um, the first one, the spaghetti wire, we had 379 pounds of bright and shiny at 325 a pound for $1,231.75. Now, this was in the beginning of the month. Um, I'm like backlogged on videos and then I just shot this the other day. We had number two copper uh, 49 pounds 334 a pound for $136 and 66 cents and then the bare bright we had uh, 586 pounds at 360 a pound uh, This was the price went up considerably since that uh, first ticket over there and then that was um, $2,109.60 for a total of $2,273.26. Now, um, I think I paid like $1,600 for all that. And I probably got $100 with that, the wire that was in the drum. And then this is a good representation. This here, this is a good representation of uh, spaghetti wire versus um, 500 MCM. It took us all day to do that. Now this stuff here was already paid for. I already, that was part of another load that I already got in some profit. It was kind of some epic scrap. And um, you know, for a day's worth of work, two guys, 1200 bucks, not bad. And then this one here, I did this by myself. You know, I basically made, um, you know, uh, five, 500 bucks in an hour, you know? And I, I barely had anything to strip. It was basically just a buy and sell on that. So, hey, that's not bad. So if you come as far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We got tons of stuff going on over here. Probably got 10 videos backlogged that I'll be getting to here in a minute. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. Dance, you ever seen your copper dance before?